Welcome to The Gym's Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Kleber, and this podcast is designed to share stories of our franchisees, franchisors, Jim himself, and other members of The Gym's family that we think you might find interesting. If you are researching our brand, we've got a previous back catalogue. There's so many great episodes that you can find online. If you do like what you hear, please make sure you leave us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching or online as well. We really do appreciate the support. Without further ado, here's today's episode. So Meghna, thank you from uh, from Jim's Dogwatch for joining us from New Zealand. And um, first of all, we want to award you with our core voucher, which is two complimentary nights um, anywhere in the Accor network, which is all over Australasia, not just Australia, New Zealand, Asia Pacific, all that sort of stuff. So it's a silver membership and we'll get that to you after the interview. But first of all, do you want to start off with um, telling us a little bit about yourself and why you were nominated or why for the Accor voucher? Sure. So uh, I'm one of the franchises here in, here in Auckland, Newland. Uh, it's in West Auckland. I bought the franchisee in um, September 2020. Uh, I was a groomer before that, but I was only doing grooming on only on weekends along with my other job. However, uh, it was always my dream and uh, I had a passion for dog grooming. So I wanted to come on board, do it full time, but didn't know how to go about it. Then I saw this advertisement on Facebook, got in touch with the franchisor at that time was Michelle. And she she fantastically told me how to get on board. And yeah, finally, I got board on uh, in September 2020. Since then, this journey with dog grooming has been marvelous. Being a single mom myself, I was struggling with the nine to five job and have that flexibility around my daughter. But since I started this business, it has given me a very good flexibility with time, being my own boss. Love to be around dogs. I've been a dog owner of three pugs myself. So yeah, three pugs. Three pugs. Yeah. That'd be a handful. I know. So but, how do you but, sleep at night? Because my I've got two Shih Tzus. And mine's I sleep in the bed and they snore all the time. So I can imagine what pugs would be like being with the flat nose. I know, and uh, my three pugs came from India, from all the way from India to New Zealand. So, and grooming them, I used to have a very different feeling. You know, I used to feel that oh wow what great they must be feeling after I groom them. So, and actually that interest came from ah. my, my own pugs and I've always been passionate about dog grooming. Jim's uh, as a brand has, well, I, as I said, I was a dog groomer before I took the franchisee, but you know how people don't trust when there is not a brand name. So I could see the difference when I bought the franchisee, the trust that people have in the Jim's brand Uh, That's because, you know, gyms have got so many divisions. So dog grooming is one Mm. of them. But the but the kind of trust that they have in the brand, that's that's amazing. And I could see the work flowing in and and I could see that getting enough customers, getting to meet my income target, all those things advertisement, advertising support, even the general support. Like, you know, if you get stuck with a few things in the beginning. the, the support was always there. So my journey with gyms have, has been great. Yeah. Uh, two and a half years down the line, um, I, I, I've myself been now, now a trainer here in New Zealand. So anybody who comes on board, uh, a new franchisee who takes the franchisee of dog grooming, they come to me for training. I train them. So, yeah, I mean, they've, they've been great. It's just been great. And how long have you been in New Zealand for? Uh, I came to New Zealand in 2009, so yeah, for, for, for a long time, yeah. And what we and so with with the grooming itself, so you were doing it on the side. So did you go for the train the full training? Or did you do it over in Australia? Or did you have to do it in New Zealand, or how did you do the training? As I said before, I took the franchisee. I was a groomer myself, but I did a grooming course with one of the master groomers here, Angela Anderson. So Angela, yeah, I've already done a certificate course with Angela, but yeah. but I was just doing after the course. I was just grooming from home only on the weekends. And did you do the gym script training as well? As in the the grooming the, training? The, now the three day business one. So there's a generic gyms training, like the one that's at um. Yeah. We, we joined during COVID, so we had to. So do it's it. online. Yeah. yeah. So ha- so uh, can it, so most people think you know you geez, you started your business pretty much at the start of COVID, and it would have been you know obviously very hard. It was hard for a lot of people here. So how how did you go during that time with your business, being a new business owner? Uh, we had quite a good support, like from to be to be honest, like the subsidies and everything from the government. At that time, we we had good support from the franchisor. 
uh, wherein you know we were given some guidelines what to follow to keep ourselves safe the customers safe and yes people were re- reluctant to book their dogs in but we could understand that why they were doing that yeah so income wise it it wasn't that great however it was good to be safe on both the ends so that wasn't a big worry at that at that point of time yeah mm. but we got through it yeah now let's talk about the benefits that you hear from customers about obviously using you guys as a mobile groomer as opposed to salon. So what can you talk to people about the difference between using a mobile dog groomer like Jim's dog wash as opposed to maybe a site-based one? Well, the first the first biggest benefit and uh, the, the difference that they see is the, the ambience. It's one-on-one. Like, you know, we don't keep any dogs in cages where, we, we, where they're waiting until we finish the other dog. So it's not that. It's like back-to-back, but it's one-on-one service. Second thing, the dog is groomed in their own, in the own on the own uh, their own property. We come across a lot of dogs that are very anxious to leave their customers. They've got that separation anxiety, so they know they are they are in their house. I mean, around their house, the owner is around, so that literally calms them down. That's another thing. Then mobile service, so it's obviously convenient. The customer doesn't have to travel. They're working from home. They're busy with their own work, and you know they're getting the dog groomed. So that that really helps. Plus, they see the difference in the service as well. Like the salons, I don't want to take names here, but when we go and groom them, because the high standard of grooming that we do, they see a lot of difference. So, so I've come with a very good feedback from my customers saying that after I have taken over grooming, apps are grooming their dogs, they they hardly go visit the vet. <laughs> So we are definitely grooming the dogs for their well-being, not just for the looks. You know what I what I mean here? Yeah. yeah, that's so a good point. Maybe can you just, yeah talk a bit a bit bit more about that? What you just said. That's a great comment, and um about not taking them to the vet. So what what are customers? What's what's the difference with your service? Maybe to to um have that response. So whenever I have a new customer, I just tell them one thing. See, I'm here to groom your dog for your for your dog's well-being. Yes, I know you want your dog to look cute, but the thing is, we we I discuss with a lot of things with them. You know. What I mean to say is if they're concentrating on the looks, this is where we need to leave the dog with a lot of, uh, you know, long lengths, all those things. But there comes um, the maintenance from the customers come in picture there. And if they're not able to maintain the dog, I'm not, I, I don't want to see that dog in a very bad shape when I come visit the dog next time. So that's, that, that's the first thing I tell them. See, I'm here to help you to, to look after the well-being of the dog. So I need I get the customer involved in the dog grooming, not just put that on me, and then let they try to understand how much time they have from their end to put on the grooming as well. So so this is what they understand, and that's why they think my dog grooming uh, technique is different to other people because I first educate them and then I get onto my work. So they they just love that part because they say, oh, the salons are just you know you just drop the dog, pick the dog, and that's it. So I said, if you, do you even know what is it? What you need to expect out of a dog, the uh, out of the dog grooming that I'm going to do on your dog? How do you know that I've done the right job? So they, oh, we we just see that the you know the the length, the body length is just cut and the hair is gone. The dog is washed clean. That's it. I said, no, that's not the thing. I said, this is where I mean about well-being of the dog. So you need to check. Grooming is not just about the hair on the body of the dog. It's about so many other things, the nails, the cleaning of the paw pads, sanitary, all those things. And if they are not looked after, obviously the dog might end up into infections and things like that, you know? So, and that's why I think the customers have come back and told me, since you've taken over, there's hardly any visit to the vet. Mm. So they have been able to tackle, you know, the infection problems or whatever they had. And because now the customers pitched in to do some kind of brushing and combing on the door, that must have helped too. That's fantastic to hear. And the other thing um, people always say is, you know, my dog can't be groomed or it's too aggressive or whatever like that, you know, so maybe just talk through for people, just provide them with a bit, a bit about how you go about those people who think their dog is ungroomable or too aggressive to, do, to be handled. So maybe talk through the process that you go through with that. Sure. So I deal with a lot of aggressive and bitey dogs on daily basis, uh, to be honest. And I have even got uh, dogs and the clients from other groomers, here, Jim's groomers, where they have passed on the dogs to me because at some point they they thought that, you know, they can't handle the dog or whatever. So I, I deal with a lot of bitey dogs and aggressive dogs. I think dogs basically are not aggressive or bitey. That kind of behavior comes from their experience. 
so i'm i really feel good about when I, when when i'm doing a puppy like a first groom because i know that i have been with the dog right from that first groom but when people come to me and say that oh my dog is i mean the salon people have not taken him on board because he's aggressive i don't think it's a behavior problem but i i think that behavior has come from something so i need i dig into a lot of a uh, background you know like why do you think your dog is like that if it's in the, like for example if it's in the breed some breeds are are aggressive breeds right like for example a rottweiler you know somebody if if i get a call saying oh can you groom my rot rottweiler the first thing i would ask is is your rottweiler friendly because some of the dogs it's in the breed however mm-hmm. if you talk about small small breed uh, small ro- dogs so it's uh, there's something going on there so most of the times i found i found out that the owners themselves try to groom the dogs at home right and they don't know the right technique right and then they start over grooming sometimes when they are grooming and the dog uh, squeaks or something they take it as a funny behavior and then you know they start laughing and all those things so so it has put some impact on the dog already yeah and then a point comes where the dog is not listening to and that's the point when the when they say oh my dog is aggressive or my dog doesn't like his legs to be touched so so you mm. see it from the there is a background to it now when they come to me there are ways around it yeah i, I first thing is i i have uh, i have different techniques techniques to groom them so i put them on a sling i put the muzzle on all those things eventually i've i've even seen this when the dog has first come to me the dog is snappy or bitey but once they gain their trust back again saying that you know this groomer is not harming me she's she's just helping me out they are fine with that so so you see you can you can have that transition but i always feel that there is a background to no dog is aggressive or bitey for me <laughs> that has that's good to that's good to we probably have to get you to work on jim's dog jim's dog's pretty pretty well known over here for, for biting groomers and stuff like that so maybe i don't know what jim's doing on his dog but we might have to get you to call jim and and cancel him about what he's doing to his little dog Apollo because he's a, I think like a little cavoodle, a cavoodle. And it's, um, yeah, very, I don't know what he's doing because at home, but he's probably doing all the wrong things from what, from what you're saying. But I was going to say though, with um, your flexibility, so I, I was raised by a single mum, so I appreciate single single mums. It's a very tough, tough gig, especially with you working as well. So how does it work around, 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 around your, with your child and your family? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's like a, what do you say? It's like a blessing. I just work I drop my daughter to school in the morning and then I start working until until just half an hour before her school finishes I stop so I'm only mobile in that in that time I pick my daughter up sort her out evenings I work from home and then weekends only one of the uh, one of the days I work from home so, so you see it's there's so much flexibility Okay so you set up your um you, you do your the people bring the dogs to you at home to do then okay yes. Yes. So my trailer is just parked across the, I mean, not across, just at, uh, on my property here. They just get, the dog, they get their dogs. And uh, anyways, the source, all the mobile slots booked at the moment. So they have no other option but to get their dog to me. So, yeah. oh, that's great. And and the trailers are really, really nice inside. We've got some videos online of them, but people need to know that the trailers, you know, that's, maybe don't talk, maybe don't talk about the features of the trailers and, and just, they're not just a tub. It's, there's a lot more involved in it. Sure, the trailer well equipped. A lot of people when they come to me, they think that there there is a salon somewhere in my house, <laughs> that, or I'm going to wash their dog in my bathtub or something. So when they see the trailer, they they are they are really, literally surprised to see how well equipped it is and how all the setup is. So and and the thing is the the tidiness, you know, and and they see the clean environment. They don't see hair lying everywhere, and you know when they say, oh my dog is getting getting groomed in a very flashy kind of. Mm. <laughs> Or something. So yeah, so that's another compliment I get. Yes. And so if there's your warm water, um, you know, if it is if it's hot, there is air conditioning, all that sort of stuff. They know, yeah, they, they know that their dogs are getting washed with nice warm water and yeah. all that a pampering session actually. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And now I know dog breeds are all different and be different answer to this question, but what's the sort of um you know advice for dog owners in regards to intervals and stuff like that obviously every breed is different but um what, what's your sort of general general advice for people like with this uh, regular groomings yes definitely six to eight w- uh, week uh, groomings doesn't matter if it's a short haired dog or a long haired dog some I've, i've got a few customers here when they think that they've got a labrador it's low maintenance it's not like that uh, every dog i needs to be regularly groomed and uh, six to eight weeks that i would say regularly professionally groomed like mm. from groomers like us however I think if you've got a dog at home 
it's your responsibility as well not just just put it on the groomers so it is their responsibility to even sit down and groom and clean the dog that doesn't mean that the dog only has to be washed every eight eight weeks uh, if the dog gets dirty it's their duty to uh, wash the dog clean the dog shampoo the dog uh, if not that at least go the dog down with um, water so that's what i would advise all the dog uh, dog uh, owners if you've got the dog it's first your responsibility not just the groomers it's- Absolutely, yeah, because like people might leave it and expect you to get all the knots and stuff, but they're just costing themselves money because you've got to be there for longer time, you've got to do more work, and it's um, not good for the dog's health. Correct. And if it is, if they can't get it done regularly, they have to be ready to even pitch in more money. That's what I would say, you know, because it takes longer. And it's not just about money. It's about the time spent with the dog. It can be really traumatic for the dog as well. The grooming experience doesn't really become a good experience for them. Uh, and then they just they just hate the whole process. So so we they need to understand all these things. So if they want their dog to love the grooming process, then all these things needs to be considered. So regular grooming and even grooming at home. You know? And is there any other services you provide besides grooming and washing? Is there anything else you do? Do you clip nails or anything, or is there other things you do? Absolutely. So the full grooms, the mini grooms, just the uh, clip um, uh, nails clipping. People even just come for the sanitary to be trimmed. Uh, you know, tie a face tidy ups. So yeah, all sorts of any everything related to grooming. Yes. And how many clients do you currently have in your business, regulars? Regulars, uh, I do at least four four a day. So in that way, I think I think I have got around eighty two hundred regular customers. That's fantastic. And you're happy with your client base and with with what your work level is at? Yes, definitely. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Now, what's your favorite dogs to work on? I know you probably can't say favorite. What type of breeds do you like working on? Is there any personality, particular personalities in dogs that those those breeds have? I think a lot of people have asked me this question, and yeah. there has been only one answer to it, and that's a golden retriever. Really? I just love the golden retriever. They're absolutely characters. <laughs> really? Okay. Because they've got they they are stubborn. They they are, <laughs> once they are in the trailer, once the whole process starts, they go they relax a lot. I have got so many of them and they all are different. And But but the thing is, after you groom them, uh, I think outcome on every dog is great. But I think the outcome on a golden retriever is just amazing. They just look absolutely stunning. Now, is there any particular types of products you use that are maybe different to others? Or is there like in terms of shampoos, are there sort of any special products that you'll use during the grooming experience? Uh, I, I uh, For everyday shampoo, I just use the everyday shampoos whoever is whatever brand is but if for the dogs who have got uh, itchy skin like skin problems i i prefer using smith and burton their products are absolutely amazing and i even sell them from a trailer so my customers buy the shampoos the colognes that are uh, for these kind of dogs and i make business on top of that too it's truly a mobile salon with the products and i was going to say as well you talked about it before i haven't heard many when I do these interviews, someone from Dog Watch mentioned it. Yeah, it's a really good point about the wellness stuff. So as you said, you can see if there's an irritated skin and you can recommend something. And even though you're not technically a vet, but you've got all that experience in regards to and you can advise and you can save customers a lot of money or maybe that trip to the vet, which can be very expensive. Definitely. And and the thing is, because as Jim's group, we have got tie-ups with all these brands. Hmm. We get it on a wholesale uh, price. And then we sell the, to the, the products to the customer lesser than what they get it in the in the supermarket. So we don't sell them on a wholesale price because we need to get that margin and, and that profit. However, they definitely get lesser than if they go and buy it in the supermarket. So in that way, it benefits them, benefits us, it benefits the dog. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was going to say with the um, dog wash division, it's obviously growing a lot. And in New Zealand, we need a lot more dog dog groomers. There's obviously a lot of dogs uh, over there as well to um to do so. What type of person makes a good franchisee? They've obviously got to love dogs, so we'll get that out of the way. But what type of person makes a good dog dog groomer or dog uh, Jim's dog wash franchisee in your mind? I, I think dog, obviously, a good, I mean, love for dogs, but dog handling is very important. Uh, the approach towards the dog, the connection that you have with the dog is very important. So if you can't connect to the dog, you wouldn't be able to groom the dog. So that's really helpful. If you've got a background Say, for example, you've got background on using scissors. For example, if you've been a barber before, you know, that really helps. So so, so these are the things that really help. If, I mean, not just from there, even if you've got a good customer service and you know how to sell your product, that really helps. 
yeah, so the, all these things, it's just a combination of all these things that make you a very good groomer. And when you take people out, because you're a trainer, um, what are some things you take people out that come and do a day with you or observation day for, for, to see what you do? What, what's the sort of things you will show them when they come out with you? Oh, so they spend two, two weeks full-time with me, like eight hours in the trailer for 10 days. So in 10 days, I have to make sure that they're confident grooming the dogs. So I show them right from how to wash a dog, how to clip the nails, how to groom a dog, customer service, how to talk to the customers, what are the, you need to analyze what are the requirements on the dog, how would you negotiate with the customer saying what's necessary on the dog. They're asking the customers about how much time they can spend to groom their dogs. So see, so the main point is your well-being. I always emphasize on that. So keeping that in mind, I get the groomers ready and 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 two weeks from there, they are just on their own grooming the dogs. You got a fantastic star rating. I read through some of the comments and your customers love you. So what's the difference that you think that you do? What what are some advice around customer service um, that you're doing maybe that other people might not be? Education. Yeah, education. And that's what I talk about is when, when people leave the dog at the salons, they don't know what's happened on the dog. So they just leave the dog there, they pick up the dog. But what about the education? We need to talk to them about what needs to be done on, on the dog and what are their expectations out of the groom. They need to need, know everything. Well, 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 I'm a human. I mean, tomorrow even I might not do something on the dog. You know, like I've forgotten to clip the nails. So do they, I need, I have my customers who actually call me and say, I think you've forgotten to clip the nails this time. I mean, it really happens. You know, it's it's a flow. However, you see, I I'm, I can also forget. But I just love that because now my customers understand what grooming is all about and what to expect. So for example, if I don't shave between the uh, paw pads, they call me and they say, oh, I think you've left one of the leg. I mean, very again, very rarely to happen. But if they know it, I just love that. You know, I just, I, I like that I have done the right thing. My customers know what to expect out of a group. That's a, it's a great answer. And I was going to say, so is that something where like when you first meet a customer, obviously you got to get to know the dog and, and form a connection, but you will, you're educating them about the breed a bit as well and what to expect or what type of groom suits that dog or do they come to you with their own ideas or how does that generally work? For the, if it's a new customer, the first thing I need to know is what do they understand about the breed that they already have. For example, if they have a Labradoodle, all right? So I ask them, what do you understand about a Labradoodle? So so they, the general answer would be, oh, he's a mix between a Labrador and a Poodle. <laughs> I say, okay, so do you understand the different coat types of a Poodle and a Labrador, right? So your Labrador is a double-coated dog. Your Poodle is not. Okay, so your Labrador here is shedding. Your poodle is not. Your poodle here is more of a fur. So your Labradoodle is a combination of both of them. Yeah, so you you might see some shedding and you might see a lot of hair growing as well. So what what are your expectations? Like Then I tell them that, you know, how would your Labradoodle look good? Like you obviously leave the, uh, the ears and the tail long. You don't trim much about it, but you brush that out. However, if I'm leaving it longer, you see, I'm going to see your dog in the next six to eight weeks. Yeah. So long hair is maintenance from your end too. So you've got a dog who, who's like a beautiful dog because it's going to have a lot of fur. So this is what I tell them, that the grooming is not just about coming to the groomer. You need to be on top of it too. So all these things, you know, they need to understand what's going on with the breed itself. So unless and until you don't say that, some people just take it for, oh, my dog looks cute. Yes, I want the dog to look full. Fantastic. But how much time can you pitch in? I don't want to come in the eighth week and seeing a lot of knots and mats on the dog's chin and the cheek where you have not combed it out. Yeah. And then and I'm putting the dog in a lot of pain. So that those things are not happening. So we need to be like, you know, we me and the customer have, have to work together to make sure that the grooming process is not a not a traumatic process for the dog. And the dog is enjoying every time he's coming to the trailer. Do you have any stories where you've taken on a dog which was really, really hard maybe at the start or didn't have any trust or anything like that and you've been able to turn it around from multiple grooms? Is there any stories or standout customers you have in that regard? Definitely. I've got so many dogs who have come to me in, in the beginning and, you know, they don't like even touching me. They're back. Well, and they're showing me the, snipe, uh, the, the signs that I might snap you or bite you or whatever. And now they come to me and this is where they have started coming to me. And that's why I love when, when I start grooming the dogs right from the puppy stage, because I am not, then they are, they are groomer right from the first, from the beginning. So I've got um, dogs who have not even come to me in 
uh, for the first groom but then you know have been snappy or bitey but now they just sit there stand there steady do whatever you want let me just get out, get out of the trailer and they're happy 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 you know very that's steady great. that's great and so first of all thank you for all that information and thank you for jumping on um with the time and three really appreciate it and we're going to get this a core voucher to you so you and your daughter if you want to go anywhere at an accord call hotel you get two free nights on the gyms group and it's a big thank you to us obviously you're training as well so fantastic thank you for training the new franchisees but also thank you for being a star franchisee as well and obviously customers love you i've looked at your surveys and read a lot of the results and stuff and you know you're, you're an amazing amazing franchisee and you're an absolute credit to jim's dog washing and brand i'm really happy to hear about your success story and about how it's a lifestyle business for you so thank you very much for joining us today on the gyms podcast we appreciate your time thank you i'm i'm really honored to be a part of jim's group it's just been a fantastic journey until now and uh, yeah i mean i'm looking forward to um, join the conference next year and this membership is really really going to help me because as as i said as a single mom my daughter would be with me so this membership will definitely help absolutely and and, and we're glad we're glad that that we're glad that can help but um yeah once again we can hear it in your voice and see it in your face you obviously love what you do and that's a fantastic thing and to have a lifestyle business with a with a young child as well and that you can you know make a good income and stuff and, and enjoy what you're doing is, all the better. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Good time, Joel. You have a good one. Thank, thank you. You too. No worries. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.